Hey friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I have some Dollar Tree Farmhouse DIYs for you. We have a little visitor saying hi. Say hi, Bell Bell. Anyway, you guys, so with all that being said, let's jump right into today's DIY. All right, well, you guys asked for it and your girl is delivering your wishes. So I am going to start off by making the little house shelf. So I got a case of these from Dollar Tree and they're the new little hanging shelves. I'm sorry you guys, if you guys hear cars and motorcycles outside, it's beautiful here so I can't really help that, I'm so sorry. But um, I just start by taking all of them out of the package. I then lay them out to see what size I need them and I only ended up using two planks wide for each piece. So I just lay all my pieces out and I measure, I cut them with my saw and I will leave all the measurements down below. Honestly, you guys, you don't have to do angles like I'm doing, but I'm just extra. So um, you can always just butt them together and then just take some wood putty and fill in the cracks as if you did have them butt together. So anyway, once I had all my pieces cut, then I just take my wood glue and I glue them all together. Now for this longer one, this is gonna be our middle shelf. And on the original shelf that I have in my kitchen, um, people were asking if I made that and I told them no, but I will make it and show you guys how to make it. So that is where the inspiration came from on this one. But on my shelf in the kitchen, um, there's a bar in the front and it's really hard to decorate. So on mine, I wanted to leave the front open, but I did just fill in those holes that way um, you couldn't see the holes I mean I don't really mind the holes but I just covered them for looks next after I cut all my pieces on angles and I will also leave the angles of each piece down below for you guys so I just put them together with some hot glue and some wood glue. That way the wood glue will last a while and then the hot glue will glue it together quickly. And then I go in with my wood putty and I just fill in all the seams that don't fit perfectly together. You guys, I'm not perfect with a saw. I tell you guys all the time, I'm not a perfect crafter. Things go wrong for me all the time. And you know what, that's okay because honestly, that's life. In life, things go wrong all the time and it just is what it is. So anyway, once my wood putty was dried now I did this late at like 2 in the morning and then I let it dry overnight so the next day I came out and I just used my mini sander and the bigger sander so my bigger sander is actually new I love it so much the grip is really nice if I can find it on Amazon I will link it it is like the daddy version of my little tiny finger sander and I love it so I will try to link it but anyway so once I got done sanding everything then I take my large stir sticks and I just kind of hold them up to the back of my house and the little box part and I just mark where it needs to lay that way we can close this back up and then I just take them to my saw and I cut them down once I cut them down then I sand all the rough edges and I go in with my white Waverly chalk paint and I give it a distress coat of the paint I then take in just a cheap brush from Walmart and I just dust all that wood putty I guess you can call it dust <laughs> I dust the dust off <laughs> that's basically what I do so I dusted the dust off with a cheap brush and then I give them all a distressed coat as well of my white Waverly chalk paint now everybody always asks they want my husband to be in my videos and you guys got your wish when I was putting this together even though I knew how to put the frame together he wanted to show me how so I just let him 
have at it. So basically what we do is we lay out uh, two of the square dowels and we just kind of measure to see the width of the house. Now the box I cut wrong. I should have cut them the other way. I don't even know how to explain it you guys but it ended up coming shorter than the house so I wanted the box to be the height of the bottom of the house but in the end it looks amazing anyway so it is what it is you guys I told you I'm not perfect and I do make mistakes all the time but basically he had an amazing idea for stability what we did was we took um, pieces for in between the longer dowel rods and we measured the width like I said cut um, dowel rods down for the middle that way the house and all the pieces have something to sit on and then I needed a space that way I could put the trim pieces on so what he did was drilled holes in the dowel rods and then he took skewers from Dollar Tree and stuck those in the holes and then cut them down and also made more holes where they're going to connect on each side. That way, like if you guys have ever put together like a bookshelf or a cube organizer, there's dowels for dis for stability and basically that's exactly what we did that way when you hang this on the wall it's nice and sturdy and nothing is gonna fall so basically like I said we just lay it all out lay our pieces on it so that way we know the exact measurements and then we cut down the longer dowels and I also cut down I believe it was seven of the dowels for the inside maybe seven or ten but like I said before I will leave all that information in the description box and then this little mini miter saw came in handy so well with this project you can do angles with this so I really love that feature on it and it really helped me out when I was doing the trim on the house and basically the whole project so what I did was I took my dowel rods and these are also linked in my Amazon store in the description box um, there's a pack of 10 and I used about seven of them um, for this whole project so I basically just laid my piece up against each part and then I kind of marked it I always cut a little bit bigger because you can always cut off but you can't add to your piece and I didn't want to waste any some pieces I did mess up again it is what it is um, but I just went back and cut them and it was no big deal so I started off by cutting all the trim pieces that way when I go to paint them all then I could paint them all at the same time but with this little mini miter saw you always want to give yourself an extra eighth of an inch because when you cut it it will cut it smaller so wherever your line is just go cut to the right by just a hair so once I had all my pieces cut and sand it down on the edges where it was rough then I go in with my ink Waverly chalk paint and once again I give it a distressed coat of paint I also wanted to mention that I found the easiest way to paint stuff like this when they're in individual pieces is to paint the ends of them and then lay them out together and then you can kind of give them like a thicker coat if that makes sense because they're all sitting next to each other so you can kind of do all of one side at the same time I then just flip them over and continue that on all of them Next, I go in with a large chip brush. Now, normally I would use my small little chippy brushes, but because it's such a big piece, I knew that by using a bigger chip brush, then it would cut down on the time um, to distress these. I then just distressed the stir sticks in the back and I glued them to the backs of the box and the house. Now we're gonna glue everything to our frame. So once again, I take my wood glue and some hot glue, and before I lay it down, I'm just checking each side, and then once I know that it's in the right spot, then I do just set it down. 
Now I realized that I forgot to paint this little edge piece so I did just go in and paint that and then I glue the rest of the pieces down. Now when you cut your pieces, I left all my pieces in piles, that way I knew, um, you know, like front pieces, back pieces, etc, etc. That way when I go to glue them down, then they fit perfectly and I didn't have to figure out where each piece went. And then I just secured them in their places with some hot glue. So for the top of the house, what I did was took a dowel rod and because this is square and where the peak meets of the house is like a different shape, all I did was hold my dowel up to it, I cut it to size, and then I held it to the top, marked where the dowel rod would meet, and then I just sanded down those corners, kind of like in the shape of a house almost it reminded me of and that way when you place this down the side pieces of the dowel aren't sticking up if that makes sense now you don't have to do that nobody's going to be really focusing on the top of your house but as i've told you guys a million times i have ocd so little details like that drive me nuts but you really honestly don't have to do that I then take the back piece and I forgot to mention that once I had this together I did measure that out and cut that down and paint it and then I just secured that with some hot glue and some wood glue as well. So once all my trim pieces were on, you guys, I wasn't even going to do this, but I just got the bright idea. This is how it works for me when I'm working. Sometimes I just get ideas as I'm going. Let me know in the comments down below if that happens to you when you're crafting. But I took this chicken wire from Dollar Tree. I laid it down on my back piece and then I used my electric stapler to staple this down. I do have the exact same one or a similar stapler in my Amazon store. They're pretty inexpensive and they work amazing so I definitely recommend them. Just make sure that you're pushing down really firmly when you do use these. And then for that top piece at the top I did just kind of pull up on it while I was stapling because it's not that secured like with a screw or anything. And then I moved on to the bottom piece where um, things, where we can put things to um, hang for decoration. I don't even know if I'm making any sense, but I take this uh, six hanger over the door hanger from Dollar Tree. I think that's what it's called. And I start by taking some large wooden beads. I just take my scissors and kind of um, scrape out the hole that way it would fit on the top of my hooks and then I secured those with some hot glue. I then took my wire cutters and just made a dent in the over the door hanger and then I took my pliers and just bent it back and forth. I literally only had to bend it probably three times and it popped right off. And then I started to paint it with some Ink Waverly chalk paint and realized that I wanted to cover those holes. So I just took my wood putty once again and I filled those holes in and then once it was dry I sanded them down. Once I had them all sanded down then I finished painting. While they were drying I did go ahead and paint the rest of the hooks. And then once they were fully dry and I sanded it, then I went in and painted the beads is what I should have said. <laughs> so then once that was done, of course you guys know I have to distress. I mean, come on, it's Melissa. <laughs> That's like my signature move. But um, I do just go in with my mini chip brush and some white Waverly chalk paint and I distress that. Next, I had my husband come in and we pre-drilled holes in the little hanger and the back of the dowel rods and then we just screwed those right to the back in the middle and I also did screw some sawtooth hangers on each side. You guys, look how gorgeous this is. 
Um, I was nervous going into this because I do love to build, but I wasn't sure how it was going to turn out. But I just jumped right in with the attitude of if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. But at least I'm definitely going to try this because I want to show my people that if you just put your mind to it, you can do and make anything. Let me know in the comments down below how much you love this project. So if you guys are new here, my name is Melissa. I love to do all things crafty on a budget, especially Dollar Tree DIYs, farmhouse decor, and much more. So if that's something you're interested in, I would love if you would stick around by clicking the red subscribe button. And then you just want to tap the bell and all. That way you're notified every single time I upload so that you don't miss another Dollar Tree moment. So last week I showed you guys my earrings of the week. This week it is, okay Bella, no, no. This week it is these, again, from Walmart. I love to get my earrings from Walmart because they're just so cost effective. And I think these were like five bucks, you guys. They're nice, lightweight, and I just love them so much. I did have to bend them in the middle because they were really long and they were like pushed to the front like that. But, um, yeah, I really enjoy these. I will try to link them down below if you're interested in them. And with all that being said, let's jump right in. Oh, is that right? <laughs> let's jump back into today's DIYs. So we're going to make some decor to go in our little shelf. So if you're intimidated by the shelf and you're just like, nah, I don't really want to do that. I still have something for you. So I take these little, I don't even know what you want to call them. I know they're decor pieces, but they have the label holder in the front. And I had already painted this one. I was going to do it in a previous video and I just didn't end up doing it so I took the label holder off of the front and then I just uh, painted the rest of that white piece. I then go into my little container with all my lettering from Chalk Couture and I spell out the word home with my cursive letters and I will leave a link for all the stencils or transfers that I use in this video all in one link and you can add or subtract to that list if you like. I then just took some white Waverly chalk paint and I distressed all the way around the edges as well as where the home lettering is. I forgot to mention that I did um, distress the edges with some black before I started on the lettering. I then just go in with the same brush and I just kind of highlight that label holder. I wanted it to really stand out and then I uh, screwed it back down prior to distressing it. And look how quick and easy you guys have a nice farmhouse sign. Some things I like just plain, no bows, no greenery. So let me know in the comments down below if you would add a bow or if you would leave it as is. So moving on to the next project, these are just quick and easy you guys, so we're going to run right through them as quick as possible. But I take my knife and I take one of these house pieces from Dollar Tree, I run my knife along the inside edge and then the outside edge and then it pops right off. I then once again give a distressed coat of white Waverly chalk paint to the backing of this house and then I distress the edges with some ink Waverly chalk paint. I take my feels like home transfer from Chalk Couture. I could not wait to use these use this one you guys I just didn't know what I was going to use it for and I figured that on this one it would be perfect so I start by fuzzing my transfer and then I lay it down and use my black paste to chalk over it now I was talking to my daughter helping her with something I left this on there too long so when I pulled it up it did pull some of the paste up but no big deal, I just went in with my small brush and I just filled that in. I didn't fill it all the way in because I actually liked the way that it looked kind of distressed. So um, just make sure you're not leaving it sit for too long before you pull it up if you do go ahead and do this project. I then made a simple bow with just regular buffalo check ribbon and then I glued a double jute a double jute bow 
to that ribbon glued it to the left hand side and look how quick that was you guys and amazing it looks I love the way it looks on this shelf Moving on to this Farm Sweet Farm sign, I take one of these chalkboards from Dollar Tree that are sitting on a base and I just distress it with some Ink Waverly chalk paint around the natural wood part. I then took the Farm Sweet Farm off of this transfer. That's another thing that I love about Chalk Couture is many of their transfers have so many different options in one. So I opted for this Farm Sweet Farm and I took my white chalk paste and I chalked over that. I must have not smoothed it down, but again, this is another thing I love. Look how quick it is to just clean that up with some Q-tips and it erases no problem. And then I was done with that one. Now I did wanna glue some greenery to the bottom of this, but confession, you guys, I totally forgot. We have had a lot going on this week, so um, it just slipped my mind, but I'll probably add it at a later time. Moving on to the next project, I took this square decor piece from Dollar Tree. It had a heart with blessed, and although it was cute, I just didn't think that it went with my decor that I was making, so I did just cover that up with some white Waverly chalk paint, and then once again, surprise, surprise, I distressed the edges with some ink Waverly chalk paint. I then took this small little wreath. I got this in a Christmas um, transfer around Christmas time, so I don't believe that it's on the site anymore, but if it is, I will link it. And then once I chalked the wreath, then I chalked the word home. Once all my chalking was done, then I take some jute at the top of this sign. I randomly just wrap it around the top just to give it some dimension and some decoration, I guess you can say. And then I just made a quick finger bow out of jute and I glued that to the top. If you guys have not seen my bow tutorial video, I will link it in the cards in the right hand corner. And at the end of the video, I do show you my bow trick, how to get a perfect bow every single time and then again another quick and easy one how gorgeous is this with the rest of this decor once again I know you'll let me know in the comments down below which project was your favorite from today's video so moving on to the last project, last but not least, of course, I take this little mini terracotta pot from Dollar Tree. I think they come in a pack of three and I once again distress the front of the little pot with some ink Waverly chalk paint. Next, I take a skewer and a foam ball from Dollar Tree, and I just put the skewer in the ball. That way, when I go to paint this, it's much easier to handle. And I took this forest green Arteza paint, and I go thick with this, you guys, because these foam balls are so hard to get paint in between all the little divots I guess you can say I did go in with a very thick coat of that forest green I then had this boxwood from Walmart you guys I love Walmart's florals if you have not checked out Walmart's florals you don't know what you're missing out on not only are they cost effective and cheap but you get so much in one um, pick that they blow Dollar Trees out the water. This was 97 cents, so they're even cheaper than Dollar Trees on some of them and definitely worth it. So I just clip off the greenery. Um, I first start by pulling the leaves off or the individual picks off of the bigger pick. I then go in between each section where there's three or four leaves and I just cut them off and then I stick them into our ball by taking the skewer and just poking holes and then sticking them in. I did not need hot glue or anything. They stuck in really nicely. I then just pulled out the skewer, added a dowel, I measured how long I wanted it and then I cut it with my miter shears. Those are also linked down below and then I added some rocks for stability. I then just put some hot glue in the middle making sure that it stays put and then I distressed with some white around 
the pot as well again just to give it some character and dimension I then take some moss from Dollar Tree and I put a ton of hot glue on the rocks and then you guys my girls are playing I'm sorry but um, I just put some hot glue actually I'm sorry I'm not sorry <laughs> I love my kids and they're here so like I tell you guys all the time I am who I am it just is what it is and I don't try to pretend to be anybody else so anyway I put a ton of hot glue on the rocks I put the moss on top of those rocks and then once it's completely covered then I just trim down the edges so that it looks nice and uniform and neat and that was it you guys I am so excited with this video I am so excited with the way it turned out like I said before I was so nervous about this shelf um, I had a few mishaps but usually I do you guys I'm not a perfect crafter as I say all the time and I know that if you guys put your mind to it you can do this as well Again, let me know in the comments down below which project was your favorite and what you will be making. If you haven't subscribed already, I see that like 60% of you watch but you're not subscribed. So you might as well become part of the family. And don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoy it. Share it with your family and friends. Those thumbs up and those shares really help my channel to grow and help YouTube to notice me just a bit more. And if nobody has told Told you today you are absolutely stunning you are worthy and i love you with all my heart and soul and i will catch you guys in the next one bye